welcome to the Writer's Block. I'm your host, John Ronan, and as you know now, because we are in our 33rd year of production, I interview writers about their craft, what they're working on, what they've accomplished in the past, what they might be planning for the future. It's a slightly wider net than that, however. We have had on musicians, we've had on sculptors, we've had on actors. So if you have an idea for a writer who might be a good fit for the writer's block or another brand of artist, watch for our address at the end of the program. We'd be, loved, we'd be happy to get your suggestions. I also want to remind you that the writer's block and all the other original programming that comes out of 1623 Studios is a result of cable access television. It's a wonderful community asset for all of Cape Ann, and you don't get it with DISH or other means of accessing the internet. You'll stick with the writer's block, stick with cable. I'm very happy to say that see, this evening, we do have a writer, a local gentleman by the name of Wayne Soini, who has written a wonderful book about the history of Edward Hopper and Josephine Nivison here in Gloucester back in 19... 23, just a hundred years ago. Wayne, welcome to the Writer's Block. I'm humbled. I'm honored. I thank you very much. I feel, as a, a friend of mine who's a writer said, I, I've made it once I've been invited by you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that, but I thank her for me. Thank her for me very much. I want to say, uh, ask you, as I mentioned before we started, some background questions to our audience who may not by some chance have heard of you, know where you're from. What town are you from? Gloucester, Massachusetts. Where you were born and raised here? <laughs> yes. I was born at uh, Addison Gilbert Hospital when you could be born there. Back when there was a maternity ward. Way, way back, the yeah. horse and buggy. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not that far, but even going back to when the maternity ward stopped, that's, that's got to be 20... Oh, yeah. Well, 20, I, at, at least 20 least, years. At least, maybe. Yeah. So I know that and you're over I, 20 I, years old. Then I, <laughs> then I went to uh, Gloucester Public Schools and Gloucester High School. After that, University of Massachusetts in Amherst. In Amherst. Yes, sure. So, and then you left town for a while. Oh, yeah. Working out, out of the city until I retired. I had, now that I retired, I've been able to come back and enjoy Gloucester. Where were you living principally when you were off the Cape? In, in Brookline, Massachusetts. Brookline, so yeah, sure. you didn't go too far. <laughs> no. You were able to get back here once in a while. All the time, thanks, yeah. Now, I mentioned also before when we were talking, <clears throat> I was going to plug the daylights out of this book. It's a wonderful historical novel that you've written titled Ed and Joe, and I want to show that I, on this camera, I'm hoping our director, Tyler, can give us a good view of that. This is a pocket-sized book. Pocket-sized book. You can bring this to the beach if you like. You won't want to drop it because it's riveting. Ed and Joe. That refers to Edward Hopper and Josephine Nivison. Can you tell us what this book is about, Wayne? Thank you. Yeah, sure. I, I really think uh, I probably should have called it Ed, Joe, and Arthur because Edward Hopper and Josephine Nivison, who were the artists and the ones who fell in love, uh, also Josephine was accompanied by her cat in the summer of 23 to, to Gloucester, and her cat's name was Arthur. Um, be, be, before I tell too much about the 1923 historical novel, I like to say my source of research that anybody's free to find in the Soy Free Library, I'm sure, and other places, is an enormous book, but don't be intimidated. It's well written. Uh, Edward Hopper, uh, a, a, an intimate biography by Gail Levin. You mentioned her in your, uh, in your author's notes. And She's a professor in, uh, in, in New York City, but she has come often to Gloucester, and she's spoken next door at the KPN Museum. I'm sure in 2023, the celebrations, she'll speak uh, again. And uh, her book began 
with a nice uh, mention. I just quote a couple sentences here in the introduction. In the last decade of her life, Jo Hopper, because she married Edward, Jo Hopper was planning to write two books, one on Edward, her husband, and the other on Arthur, her cat. <laughs> Uh, someday, she said, I'll write the real story of Edward Hopper. No one else can do it. Uh, he just couldn't get there. You'll never get the whole story. It's pure Dostoevsky. And I, I thought it was, it was well written and well said in that way, uh, well spoken by Josephine Nivison, who's quite a lively and intriguing person. Uh, what was the book about? It's about Ed and Joe. It's a... Uh, Time in their life, um, we all look for the, all authors look for these turning points in people's lives when the, everything else was before and everything else is after. And the, the turning point in both of their lives, Ed and Joe, was 1923 in Gloucester. Uh, they were each uh, just about 40. I think Joe was 40 and Ed was 41. Neither had married, neither had a, 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 a hope or a belief that they would marry when they were 40. But they came to this city and the romantic and enchanting place that Gloucester, Massachusetts is affected them, I think. The moon and the stars were right. And they both painted that summer. Uh, Joe introduced Ed to watercolors. And I think uh, together, when they kept, oh, I should say, Arthur the Cat is involved here. This is from, this is, again, it's, it's historical truth it, 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 it is in the book. Here it is from Gail Levin. Uh, just let me, they hadn't been speaking with each other very much that summer, uh, and then this happened. Uh, a pretext to break silence came from Arthur the Alley Cat, who shared the trip from Greenwich Village with Nivison. Hey, I saw your cat yesterday, were the first words Nivison remembered from Ed. Uh, Ed sat on a fence and drew a map of Gloucester for me, uh, and they, together they looked for the cat, and they found him. And <laughs> that was the start of their love affair I, uh, I got his, earlier I got his name wrong, thinking he, he was a tomcat and did a lot of tomcatting, and eventually he, he, he took off again. <laughs> and, and she delayed their trip to New York to look for him for oh, a few weeks. Absolutely. She loved that cat. Uh, Arthur, in fact, uh, if you get the book by Gail Levin, there's illustrations. And a couple of the illustrations, Edward Hopper uh, uh, devotes to uh, uh, depicting Arthur the cat <laughs> in, in a godlike stature where he must worship the cat. Uh, he just a little bit irritated at this status that Arthur enjoyed in Joe's life. He was sort of jealous. So it's a triumvirate kind of our, our Ed and <laughs> a Joe. Menage are, a trois. Now, yes. is this purely accidental that you picked a topic that happened exactly 100 years ago on our 300th anniversary and brought it out just right timing for our 400th anniversary? It's a wonderful, wonderful timing. It, 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 pleasantly, it, it surprised me when I started into it uh, that, uh, and realized that 1923 was the tricentennial, uh, and they had to have taken part in and enjoyed some of the activities of uh, 1923. So a lot of, um, if there's four characters, Ed, Joe, Arthur, and one more, the one more is Gloucester, Gloucester in 1923, and those pageants and parades and dances and concerts that were all happening. And I had Ed and Joe uh, attend or observe or see things that actually did happen, people that were really uh, 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 involved in, in the 1923 celebrations. So this is a historical novel. Historical many, of the, novel. many of the characters are real people. You use real names. You fill them out. We hear conversations we know you couldn't have overheard because you're too much of Made a youngster. Up. Too much of a youngster. But you you put yourself in that in that in that aura in that bubble of time and create a really interesting interesting uh, book, including characters, conversations, incidents. The um, 
Uh, wonderful thing about Gloucester is you never know who you're going to meet in the street or accidentally or randomly. Uh, and I had the honor and privilege of meeting uh, a veteran of the, of the uh, Spanish-American War in Gloucester. Uh, his name was James Centennial Nutt, N-U-T-T. -T. Real person, actual historical figure. I put him into this book because the uh, uh, war with Spain was 1898. The 25th anniversary of the war was 1923. 20. So when they had uh, 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 veterans come forward and you know be honored, he was one of them. He was Captain Ca Captain James Centennial. Not why did he get the name Centennial? I asked him. The middle name Centennial. He was born on July 4th, 1876. <laughs> I met somebody who was born on the 100th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. That's a, and it's a name, wonderful and, coincidence. And who, be, who became he's in there. So he's in this book. And really, I've never seen him celebrated or, or, or uh, even in the, new, in the Gloucester Daily Times in any way uh, memorialized. But, but he and others, it was an all-volunteer group from Gloucester, he and others were, I'm sure, celebrated in 1923. And maybe so it, it was maybe someone point. will hear you talking about him and get the idea to write him up in a story in the 400 Stories Project. I hope they do. I certain, certainly think he's got, quite, he's got a story to tell. Uh, only, so yeah. so the, these people met and fell in love. He was just 40, 41, born in 82, I think he was. Is that yeah. right? I think you're right. Yep. 82. Yep. And uh, in so New they, York. they meet in, yep. in 1923, not in the city, not knowing, and they not knowing that, that he will be one of the biggest stars celebrated between that date and 2023 for his great mm. feats in art. John, I mentioned the turning point. You're into it now. The turning point in people's lives. By chance, when they are 40 years old, these two people meet and fall in love and they get married quickly. Then they're together for 40 more years. It's almost perfect in the center of their lives. It's a turning point. Uh, up until then, Joe and Ed had been New Yorkers, uh, single, uh, no permanent relationships, um, minor artists, minor key artists. In fact, Ed was a, an illustrator, not a painter. He hadn't sold a painting in 10 years. He, he wasn't a happy illustrator. Not, yeah. a ha not a happy illustrator. And then 1923 happened, and it was like lightning out of the sky. They, they looked around, especially Ed, and said, I've got to capture this. I've got to paint this, this house, and then this house. And you'll find that the paintings that he made in the summer of 1923 uh, uh, later that year in New York City, sold out. And one of them was selected by a museum in a competition to be the one work of art that was, a, was a, uh, bought by that museum that year. So he was, uh, was, was on. That, was that the one that was sold for $1,500? Well, one or earlier sold for, I think it was $500 in 1912. But the next one down might have been, been $1,500. I forgot, the Whitney Museum has a receipt. I don't I it was can't tell a you. hell of a lot of money then. It was. He changed from, he ceased to illustrate. He became a painter 100%, and he made a wonderful living at it. Uh, realistically, he became the uh, best-selling artist of the, of the Depression, 1930s. So when money was scarce, the few rich people around were buying Ed Hopper paintings. And uh, if you look at American art, it goes along here, and then it takes, takes a swerve in the direction of Edward Hopper kind of paintings. And Edward Hopper was an influential painter. The way he painted, the, the others started to try to... I uh, had great fun when I was reading your book, uh, looking up some of his art. It's easily, easily found online. Yes. And you, so you can see instantly if a house is mentioned. You can find the house that he painted, maybe on Prospect Street or oh. you know some, some other local... Uh, local uh, well, site and it's fun to fun to feel so grounded in the book and in Hopper's history and to live here. It, it, it's as if some uh, fairy godmother touched various parts <laughs> of the city yes. and made them 
worthy of art, you know, being preserved in a painting, and then said, you know, the prices never change. You, you, so we still can see them much as they were yes. to, this, to this day. They're not torn down, they're not gone. They're still here, and you can still... This whole uh, section of Prospect yeah. Street, yeah. it's identical. My wife has an office there, and I often, f walking by, feel like I'm walking into one of, one of his oils, you know. Sure. It's the same, nothing's changed. I always like to ask m some nuts and bolts questions because a lot of people write, who watch the, the writer's block want to be writers. When did you get the idea for this book, uh, Wayne, and how long did it take from uh, con conception to <laughs> have, having a copy in your hand? <laughs> I'm sure it was, uh, I have to say, years from starting idea to eventually a draft that I could send to be published. Um, but uh, talking to those wa writers and wannabe writers, many of whom you guide in your, in your instruction as a professor in, in composition, um, you learn to write a novel by, by writing one novel first. And every novel after that is easier. So uh, when did I start writing this novel? Probably when I started the first one I ever wrote, and you go on from there. Several years later, I was able, this is mo really my most recent published novel, and I'm looking at it, it's, it was the most fun to write, and it was a very, very creative process. Um, I, from, the, from the research, I, minor research I did just by reading this book by Ed, Gail Levin, I wasn't going to learn anything, writing, I wasn't going to learn anything new about Ed and Joe. I, what I knew, I knew. I wasn't going to learn anything new about Gloucester because I lived here, and that, I didn't have to research that. And what I was going to learn that was new was about writing that up and realizing, pushing the envelope as I wrote each day, everybody who writes should write each day, yeah, not yeah. skip, uh, you know I agree, that rule. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and even if it's only half hour an hour, just get that in. Um, the possibilities that you have when you start out, y your imagination of the sentence is limited to one usually simple declaratory <laughs> sentence and you don't write any other way. And then you realize, wait, I could start with the verb or the noun or move this around, or I could make a sentence fragment. And, and, and another one, and it's different ways of saying the same thing, and they convey a different impression entirely. So those are the kinds of things creatively I was happy to do when I was essentially re rewriting. All first drafts are terrible, but you, when you rewrite, you can make something out of it. When I tell my students, I suggest to my students a second or third draft, they, they, they don't know that concept. They say, well, I did it once, isn't that enough? How, how often people don't realize, and they're cheating themselves because the fun is in, I think, the rewriting. The, the, the difficulty, the dense trouble, you're facing a blank sheet of paper. That's difficult and terrifying. It is. But when you fill it up with words, now you get something to work with, you know, once it, once it cools off. <laughs> yeah, a, a blank piece of paper is like this, this white snow abyss you can dive in and you're lost and let's yeah. say you put something black and white under it. I want to mention the book is very clearly written and it reminded me and I mentioned this to you before the show it's true it reminds me of Raymond Chandler's writing now partly that's your style partly I was getting back into the 20s and the 30s going back pre-war style and it was, it's not as flowery it's not as, as it got later it's more Hemingway like or Raymond Chandler like direct, clean, clear, worthy of Gloucester. I, I'm glad to think so. I, I thank you. That's a great compliment. Um, may I say I, I took a class from a one-day class from the, uh, Kurt Vonnegut. And that was an exciting moment for me uh, uh, because he, he brought us into the uh, uh, concept that <laughs> The main thing is to be clear. He said, even if your sentence seems clumsy, at least if it 
clearly told somebody something without you know hinting at it or being vague. Yeah. Do it, even if it seems clumsy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it's good practical advice. And you said write every day. I asked Tim O'Brien, the novelist, what the most important thing about writing. He said, putting in your butt time. Yeah. Whether it's the lightning yeah. striking or not, yeah. sit down. Oh, absolutely. I wonder if you could pick out a part of this book, a short passage that kind of reflects, in your opinion, reflects the tone and the character, the purpose of the novel. Now, that's asking a lot. Uh, well, I, I, remembering I wrote this intentionally knowing that the, it was going to be going to the Gloucester 400 uh, uh, as an activity of the Gloucester 400 and in it, 2023. And it says that I, right, I, on the, I, uh, right on the cover. I, I, I wanted to, to conclude with some kind of salute to, the, to that hardworking group that helps uh, uh, preserve our history and, and is, is going to make a lot of fun uh, uh, for the citizens of the, uh, and those uh, visitors to the city where of Boston. Where are you going to, what page are you going to read look, from? Look to the end, of, uh, end of the book, page 320. 320. 320. 320. And uh, okay. I'll, I'll, uh, this is the one paragraph that ends it. Our artists come and go playing God, making and remaking Gloucester in their own image, while Gloucester people, whose lives can be hard, living and working where countless dangers abound, find nectars and ambrosias to savor, magic alive in their salt air, a long boulevard to walk to check out the Norway ducks and reports of a sea serpent in their harbor. The Gloucester 400 Committee and its many volunteers are dedicated to demonstrating in innumerable activities, exhibits, parades, pageant shows, concerts, and competitions, that it remains true, as it has for hundreds of years, that those who live exactly here on the great globe dwell and roam in a special light when not nestling snugly under their exceptional canopy of bright stars by the deep blue sea, gliding and schooning between their jubilees. In some, the tide comes in and the tide goes out, but Gloucester, Gloucester abides. Wayne, that is good writing. Well, that is good hope, writing. Hope, hope it matches the city of Gloucester. Where can uh, uh, our audience, our viewer audience, find the names of your other books and where can they get this and the other books? Well, let me start with this one, Ed and Joe. Ed and Joe is available at local bookstores, especially uh, KPN Museum and the, um, the bookstore, you know, the bookstore on Main Street. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the Gloucester 400 has a sort of a headquarters and they sell this book because it's an activity of the Gloucester 400. Uh, if anybody didn't want to patronize a local bookstore or Gloucester's out of the way for them, I don't know who that would be, but the, uh, this book and my others are available on Amazon, Amazon Books. So they, they can simply Amazon type books. in Wayne, Wayne Soini. Soini. The, the, the spelling on Soini, by the way, for our audience, S-O-I-N-I, pronounced Soini, S-O-I-N-I, Wayne. So, Amazon. Right. Thank you. What advice do you have for somebody besides writing every day? What, what should potential writers uh, read or shoot for when they're starting out? Uh, it's funny to say that uh, because you know and I know. You, you've had enough students to realize. If you're a writer, you can't help but write. I don't have to say, well, be careful and make sure every day you write it. I don't have to say that. They're going to write. If they're writers, they're going to write. Only thing is, be open. That's the hardest part. We have a kind of a pride of authorship when we start. We're very, what we've written is so precious. It's hard. It's hard to get. <laughs> what we have is so precious that we give it over to you, not to criticize, but to praise. And when you come back, 
with honest criticism and say, you know, this could be done better. This is misspelled. Right. Get your grammar book out and <laughs> things yeah. like that. Oh, I'm horrified that I've, and I almost will, st almost will stop writing, but I never will stop writing because I'm a writer. Uh, don't be, in, be happy. Be happy when you get feedback, especially honest feedback. If you give it to your mother and your friends, they're only going to say, what a wonderful thing. I'm glad I read that. Thanks. And you get nowhere. You, you're, you're spinning wheels. You're not making any right, progress. Right, right, right. So be happy with criticism. Invite criticism. Invite comments. That, yeah, uh, be happy with criticism. That's a wonderful, wonderful motto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I show poems sometimes to people, and I can tell instantly if they care or not. They just, oh, that's nice, John. <laughs> what, what nice work. That's a wonderful poem. And, okay, okay thanks. Yeah. But you give it yeah. to somebody else, and they might give you honest criticism, and it might be tough. Yeah. But that's all you can use. Sure. They're uh, paying you a great, if they pay attention to what you've written and, 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 and point out where it might have gone differently, they're the readers that you're writing for. If you, if you recognize they're giving you a, a great gift. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I hope after our show runs that the sales go through the roof sure. on, this, on this book and you have, you have to have a new printing order. Remembering that this does, the royalties go to the uh, cost of 400 yes. for this, this book. I want to hold it up again to that camera. I see that's, that camera's on. This is Ed and Joe, novel, historical novel by Wayne Soini, and it is a very, very fine read. I recommend it. About Gloucester and love in 1923, 100 years ago. Wayne, thank you for being on the Writer's Block. I appreciate your time. This was fun. What a pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm glad to have been here. I want to thank our TV audience, too, for being with us. If you've learned something about Wayne Soini's talent and the talent he poured into Ed and Joe, this wonderful novel that just recently came out, then the Writer's Block has done its job. Thanks for being with us, and I hope to see you again next time on the Writer's Block. Good night.